Hello and welcome to Creation.com Talk. I am Dr. Robert Carter. And I'm Joe Tay. And we are having a fascinating discussion on the supposed human-like footprints found in Glen Rose, Texas. True or false, real or not, that's what we're going to get into. So, uh, Rob, this is um, sometimes called the Paluxy Trek. So this is, like you say, it's a, yep. it's a series of footprints that we see in uh, Glen Rose, Texas that appear to, be, to show humans and dinosaur footprints together. So I think if this is true, it's going to be fascinating because that means that humans and dinosaurs live together at the same time. And this evidence would contradict what evolutionists say because evolution says that um, dinosaurs died out like 66 million years ago before human beings walked the earth. So what we want to yeah. know is, is this true or is it false? What, what do you think? Well, honestly, I know this is a big deal for a lot of people. And I know that a lot of creationists have talked about this for decades. But as an organization, CMI has decided that these are not really human footprints. It's hard to do, might be politically incorrect in some circles, but we just had to, to make that statement. And I noticed, Rob, whether this is really human and dinosaur footprints together or not, it doesn't really matter much because we know from the Bible that dinosaurs and men were both created on the same day. And um, as we cover in other sessions, in Job chapter 40, God created an animal which was described as behemoth. And Job was familiar with this animal. So behemoth lived at the same time as Job and is described as having a tail the size of a cedar, cedar tree. And this description is only consistent with one of the long-necked several pot dinosaurs. So we know that dinosaurs and men did live together. So what we're dealing with today is just whether the tracks are real I mean, are they really humans and dinosaurs together or not, right? Yeah, we have a biblical record. Bible is the Bible. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible is true. Very clearly, Job and other places, we have things that sound like dinosaurs. So I have no problem with dinosaurs and humans living together. But is there evidence for that? That is the question. I want to caution the uh, listeners and the watchers. There is something called the knockout punch syndrome. What's In fact, that? if you go on... Creation.com, you'll see an article by Gary Bates called the Knockout Punch Syndrome. And that is, people are looking for that one argument that will destroy their opposition. That one mm. thing you can say, yes. well, you just got them. <laughs> you can't possibly recover from that. And it never works. Why not? Because specifically in the uh, evolution creation debate, mm. the arguments are nuanced. They go back decades. There's philosophy involved. There's data and data interpretation involved. There is human error involved. You can't just say something and have it magically fix all the problems. That's not the way it works. Mm. This is a subject that takes a lot of, of talk, a lot of in-depth analysis. And a lot of times you get to an area that's gray mm -hmm. and you would like it to be true, but you can't prove it to be true either way so it's one of these arguments where you take it and you kind of like put it on the back shelf of your brain and say yeah maybe someday i'll be able to take that off again and use it as a good argument but for now i'm not certain and i believe the plexi tracks are actually um one notch down from there i would love for them to be true mm -hmm. but no one here at cmi really believes that they're true in fact none of the major creationist organizations have validated these yeah they've interesting. all come to the same conclusion yeah, and interestingly, the organization that first um, proposed that these were actually um, humans and dinosaur tracks as, have actually retracted from that. Yeah, that'd be ICR. Yes, that's right. right. So let me read a quote from Gary's article, because this is just a one-paragraph summary of the whole issue. In a section titled, Human and Dinosaur Footprints in the Same Rock Layers in the Paluxy River at Glen Rose, Texas. He says mm -hmm. this, No major creationist organization accepts the validity of these claims. That should cause one to stop and think because many of these organizations, like us, have multiple scientists peer-reviewing such claims as per the scriptural admonition of seeking safety in a multitude of counselors. That's Proverbs 11.14 and 24.6. But why hang your hat on this one when there's already substantiated evidence of a recent existence for dinosaurs, such as soft tissue found in T-Rex fossils that are supposed to be millions of years old? And there's a reference to an article, creation.com com slash Schweitz two. Mm. And what about the depictions of dinosaurs on Bishop Bell's tomb in the UK? He was buried in AD 1496, long before books showing their reconstruction from fossils existed. Mm -hmm. So in other words, 
there's evidence of different ranks. Mm. We have really good evidence for soft tissue in dinosaurs. That is slam dunk, wonderful evidence that these things are not millions of years old. Yes. We also have some historical depictions of dinosaurs in artwork that are look fairly modern in their depiction of dinosaurs. And then we have the Paluxy tracks, which probably aren't true. <laughs> okay. So why talk about the Paluxy tracks if it's not one of the good arguments? Because we want our supporters to have the best evidences possible. We want them to be grounded in good arguments. A lot of times someone can be well-meaning and they could be hanging their hat on something that's actually a bad argument. And then when it's shown that that argument doesn't hold, mm. their faith can be troubled. They can might even just walk away. We don't want to have bad arguments. Mm -hmm. In fact, our article, um, Arguments We Think a Creationist Should Not Use, one of the most cited article on our website, deals with a lot of things we used to think were true. And now we say, look, don't make that argument. And the Paluxy tracks are on that list. Yeah, and the Paluxy tracks, as I understand it, like, like we say, is a series of tracks. They appear to be humans and dinosaurs together. So why are those tracks not human? Why can't they be human? That's hard to answer. One thing that happens is when you've got a, a, a you know, several-toed dinosaur walking in very thick mud, mm -hmm. the foot squishes in when it foot comes out of the mud again, it leaves a weird impression behind. Mm. It's almost human-like, but as they've looked at these, these, um, these fossil footprints, they've noticed that over time, as they weathered more, they became more dinosaur-like in the weathering pattern. In other words, as more of it was exposed, as the iron inside the print was oxidized, it had much more of a dinosaur-like appearance than a human-like appearance. So Rob, I also understand that this cannot be human footprints because if you look at the distance between each step, the pacing, um, each step is like more than one meter away from each other. And it's yeah. almost impossible um, to get a footprint made by a human that size. I mean, this is soft mud, it's not hard ground. So you, yeah, can't, you can't run yeah. with a big stride when, if your feet are stuck in mud. Yeah, and Hard ground maybe, but not, not in gooey sort of squishy things. You have no way to jump. That's not the way humans operate. Yeah, and these footprints, they are huge. They're like 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters wide, you know, far too big for humans to make as well. And yeah. um, I think when you put everything together and you see how the footprints, when they, like, like you say, when they erode, they begin to take on the coloration, discoloration, and the shape. And, and of, shape of um, dinosaur footprint. Like a tridactyl feet, so it's a tree toe dinosaur like yeah. shape that you see over there. So, um, yeah, I think that's. When you put that together, we have to say that the evidence is not convincing that that's actually a human footprint. It actually appears, like you say, to be a dinosaur footprint. Yeah, and that's why we answer it. It's not convincing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's a, it's a category B argument. It's put it aside. Let's talk about things that are better arguments. But you know, these aren't the only uh, human-like footprints that are found in Cretaceous-era limestones. Emile Silvestru. Uh, one of our uh, former speakers, he wrote an article about some very similar things found in some Cretaceous limestones up in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And in his long article in the Journal of Creation, he analyzed these things and said, no, these are dinosaur footprints. Mm -hmm. So let's not jump to conclusions. Let's be very careful here. And let's focus on the things that are better arguments. Okay, so Rob, just to sum up all that we have discussed today, we have mentioned that the Paluxy tracks are not the best evidence that dinosaurs and men live together. You mentioned no, that they're, they're better evidence, um, dinosaur soft tissue. You mentioned um, artifacts of dinosaurs that uh, to show people depicting dinosaurs from centuries before we even discovered dinosaurs. So um, those are much better evidence. We should focus on that and put the stuff that's in the gray area like Paluxy tracks to the side. And um, if you enjoyed this, this chat, I would encourage you guys to actually look at, um, to check out the, the articles that we have at the bottom of this um, video. And Rob? Yes, there's some excellent articles on dinosaurs on creation.com. There are also some excellent videos and we have several books available on creation.com. We love dinosaurs. We have provided this information for you. And thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again. Bye.